Um, in your opinion, what was the original message of hip hop? So the original message was, I'm going to say it, togetherness, upbringing people out of a struggle, um, for doing whatever they could do within their means to mm -hmm. get by day by day. And, and from that, birthed like hip hop. Okay. I'm going to throw yeah. up Evan's comment in the chat. You can probably rebuttal it or agree with it or expand on it, however you want to flow. But Mr. Evans Maddox is saying it was all about showing style, in my opinion. Now I'm just going to throw this out here. Evans, when you say style, are you referring to the lyrical content or the fashion content? Because I know that's something that we never really talked about in these past couple of episodes and never really came up, but... I mean, hey, we can talk about that too, because that's a that's very much an aspect of hip hop as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And kid doctor, feel free to chime in while we wait for Evans, Maddie. I mean, if we think about hip hop in the four bases: mm -hmm. DJing, breaking, graffiti, and MCing. Mm -hmm. The braggadocious style of fashion came later. I don't know if, if Evans Maddox talking more about showing style as in the fashion context or showing style as in the MC's flows and the graffiti and breakers like expressing themselves through movement and body. Um, but yeah. All that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So Evans, if you can, could you um, expand on... <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. I don't know what's happening there, but that was wicked. Woo, woo. Thank you. <laughs> Let's say I, I don't even want to call it that, but an mm -hmm. urban esque kind of platform of like the Bronx mm -hmm. in the 70s, aka yeah. decayed. New York City didn't care about it. And from that, like I was saying, a phoenix through the ashes came yeah. hip hop and everything else. And through that, they wanted to look good, they wanted to look fly. They wanted to mimic what they were seeing on TV. But because a lot of people were looking into the Bronx and seeing what was happening with this new culture, and graffiti started to pop off. Mm -hmm. People were like, ooh. So then you had artists like Grandmaster Flash, mm -hmm. Cole Crush. And so like they would just rock out like a normal person would. Right. But because they had a lot of more eyes on them, and you had Sylvia, um, who wanted to up up the ante in a sense mm -hmm. um come rappers delight grandmaster flash and furious five started getting some more money started to dress a bit more furious let's say <laughs> um and then from that like you had the whole fashion sense where you had the kangos the shell toes the pumas mm -hmm. uh you Go had change. the nameplate belts mm -hmm. um you had the graffiti on your jackets, right. your hoop earrings and stuff like that. Bamboo earrings. Straightforward yeah. to what it is now to where you had, if we look at present time, even in the 90s, you had like Adidas, obviously. You had yep. Nike. You had Puma. Mm -hmm. uh, but from that birthed PNB, which is a New York City street company, post mm -hmm. no bills. Right. From there, you had Zoo York, which is skate culture. Mm -hmm. And from that, you still find a lot of essence of hip hop and, and 90s hip hop and a lot of skate culture still to this day, mm -hmm. uh, even in the clothing and stuff like that. And then from that, you had the 2000s you had, yep. or late 90s where you had rock aware. Yep. And then from that, Fubu, Fubu um, everybody Fubu. says his name wrong in Iche, which is actually the real name of it is NYC. Oh, um, shoot, I didn't even know that. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> everybody everybody called it Aniche, but it's actually NYC. Uh, the so if you, didn't, if you didn't know, now you know. But they didn't bother correcting everybody because that was actually... Done on purpose? Not done on purpose. It, I think it almost became a point where they were just like, okay. It's NYC, but we'll, we'll say Aniche too. Cause All right. But yeah, I was saying, like, I remember, especially for me, I grew up in the 90s, and 
that was the style, you know, all the different things that I'm seeing come back again. And I'm just like, I'm like literally reliving my, my junior high school days. I know y'all can figure out the math how old I am. It's okay. But um, yeah, I'm like, d like I'm in the store the other day. I was in H&M and or Forever 21 and they have like the pleather, the fake leather look, the uh, Mary Janes. I'm just like, wow. Yeah. I remember wearing these to school. Like I'm like, ah, in my head, you know. <laughs> But like fashion is always recycled. What's old is new again. They change it up. They call it a different name. Like exactly. my folks, what they used to call bell bottoms, we call it flares. What they yep. used to call pedal pushers, we call it uh, capris. Platforms. Oh yeah. Yeah, platforms. Well, platforms are still kind of platforms, I think. Yeah, that hasn't really changed. Yeah, much. that hasn't really changed much. But yeah, you know, it's like what's old is new again, and it's re cycled or revamped or looked a little pretty to uh, appeal to the generation of today at that time it's usually about a 20-year cycle yeah mm -hmm. uh if, if you really think about it it's about a 20-year mm -hmm. cycle so yeah give or take and it's usually the way that fashion works is the fashion that say we grew up in the 90s 20 mm -hmm. years later mm -hmm. 25 years later right. we now have kids we have children kind of like circular right. where it's like okay they saw either pictures of us wearing that stuff or they remember us wearing stuff like that mm -hmm. so it's the nostalgic factor and that's a lot of times that happens in a lot of things yeah. not just fashion music mm -hmm. as well so right it's a, I, I've actually found it somewhat organic so I got two teenagers mm -hmm. and I don't think they were exposed to 90s culture or fashion, but if you take a picture of them today, standing next to each other, you would swear you were looking at two kids from 1993. And I don't know where they get this, right? My kid, my son, like there's days he comes down, he's going out to the movies with his friends mm -hmm. and he's wearing like khakis and like a Snoop Dogg like plaid shirt. And I'm like, wow. what? He's got chucks on and everything. And, and I don't think he even knows where he's getting this from. So right. it, it's weird. Yeah. And it, it now we just need them to bring back the music. So if they would just stop <laughs> front and, and on just the fashion and bring back some of the music, then it'll all bounce out. So. That thousand percent. It, it might happen. Thousand you percent. never know. Keep hope alive. You just never you, know. I I think I think so. Mm -hmm. um, because and, and here's a good way to bring in what we were discussing on soundcheck. Right. If we take a look back. It's the first time in 30 years that there hasn't been a number one hip hop album in the Billboard charts. So why is that? When you look at at a bigger scale, you have hip hop's 50th year this year. There isn't one single hip hop album that hasn't reached number one status on the Billboard charts. A single that hasn't really reached a number one status mm. on the Billboard charts either. I'm talking about like singles for length of time, mm -hmm. and that's kind of problematic because it's happening on hip hop's fiftieth. Right. But then you also, on that flip side, you have concerts. LL Cool J's Force Tour. You have Fifty Cent is on concert. He was just here the other day. You have. Um, Wu Tang Nas doing concerts, selling out right. like instantly selling out. Right. Canada, the States. Mm -hmm. You have new artists who can't even sell a hundred plus. I'm not saying all of them, mm -hmm. but there's you you can check like your double XLs, your stuff like that, where they'll be doing shows and concerts. They can't even sell out, where a lot of the artists are canceling their mm -hmm. shows. Mm -hmm. And it's, I just find it's like sad to the point where you look at our music back, 90s hip hop, LL Cool J, stuff like that versus the new artists. Mm -hmm. we're, we're still killing it. LL Cool J is still killing it. The Roots mm -hmm. is still killing it. Nas, Wu-Tang still killing it. The new artists, I don't know. We need to bring back like the essence. We've kind of... And it's, it's the message received or has the message been missed? Boom. And it's circular. Mm -hmm. This is kind of what I'm saying. We started off really strong, and I think, in a sense, we've kind of lost our way. Mm. Um, what we that's hear the, on That's the same day. thing with, like, 
for like the news media, you know what I'm saying? All the news stories, exactly. the same, no matter yep. what network it is, you know what I mean? So yep. I, I get your point. It's the same thing with music. It's the same thing with news. It's the same thing with TV. Mm. And and that's that's the issue is that you're not getting a lot of the variety. And from that, you also had it where satellite radio became a thing where it became the outlet to have variety back. Yeah. Because like if you listen to terrestrial radio, it's almost hard to find local news in certain areas depending where you're from. I'm lucky enough that I live in Toronto, so I can listen to, if I wanted to listen to the hyper-local Toronto news, I could listen to it. But right. there's places where you go, say even if I go up north or if I go to the States, mm -hmm. they're listening. I thought, was, I thought Canada was north already. <laughs> <laughs> just joking, just joking, just joking. But like, it's like, you'll hear like, you could be in some like little county beside like, say, New York mm -hmm. or or wherever Wisconsin or, or something like Boston yeah. or Boston yeah. <laughs> where the drink cutty sock in the park <laughs> after dark wow no no we don't talk like that I talk yeah, like Bobby Brown yeah there's a lot of dudes out there talking like that guy stop it <laughs> not me though I don't talk like that 